Hello and welcome to this week's video on my Power Armor project. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the design for the electronics in the suit, some things that are going to be fitted on this prototype were going to be fitted, and some things that will be fitted on the next prototype. There'll also be a bit of a midway break of me talking, showing some mobility of the suit out in what is my regular workplace. I'm going to start off with the damage monitoring system. As you can see, there is random wires hanging out of this thing all over. These are all sensor wires that are embedded into the armor plate itself. Epoxy resin into the plate in a zigzag fashion as demonstrated with the scotch tape, just back and forth, back and forth, with a small gap between each run, with each sensor wire covering a particular grid of the armor, so the set of sensor wires on the side, one on the right, one on the left, and the side again. And these sensor wires were all over this suit in pretty much every panel. However, this is something that I'm going to have to add onto the next prototype and really get it working on that one. Because unfortunately, as previously mentioned, I've had to trim all of the panels down quite excessively. And that has meant that I've ended up cutting through these sensor wires on basically every panel. Slightly annoying, but it is what it is for now. But at least on the next prototype, what I will be doing is I'll be having these sensor wires embedded between different layers of the armour itself. So that if a round impacts the armour, you'll be able to tell if it's just breached the first layer of the armour or it's actually breached all the way through the armour plate. It'll do this simply by breaking the what will then be a very brittle epoxy wire into the armour plate. It'll break the wire, cause an open circuit. The wire will be linked to a microcontroller in the top of the backpack, which will then alert the operator and possibly field medic of where that breach in the armour is. Apart from it being quite a neat feature to put in that was also way easier than you think to do, the first real reason for doing this is if the operator has a round impact the armour and damaged the outer layer, it would be useful to know exactly where that damage is so they can angle themselves moving forward to not expose that damaged piece of armour. Also, due to it having the internal exoskeleton and all of the plates, particularly the chest plate, locating into the back plate, when the round impacts the armour, you might not actually be able to tell where it's damaged and how badly it's damaged. What I also found in the limited ballistic testing I've been able to do is when the rounds impacted the armour, uh, the energy gets absorbed, basically turning the ceramic tiles into dust. That's where the energy goes, which means there isn't energy hitting the suit like a hammer, which then, with that energy transfer, meaning the operator would be pushed back or would feel physical force on them. That might sound like a little bit of an exaggeration, like there should actually be more energy transferred into pushing the operator back. But again, from the ballistic testing I did, the pieces were propped up against the post, but to be honest, not propped up very well, and they barely moved. Again, it just shattered the pieces of ceramic into dust, and that's how it absorbed the energy and dissipated it throughout. With that in mind as well, if a round does get through, there's a good chance it's just gonna be turned into fairly low velocity shrapnel. And while of course I have no experience in this myself, I imagine in a firefight, high intense adrenaline is going, if you've just got a bit of shrapnel that's come through, perhaps you might not feel it and think it's as bad as it actually is. So it would be helpful to know that something has actually penetrated the armour. Which brings me on to the second reason, when it comes to a field medic coming out to an operator in the suit who has been wounded, there could be a lot of surface damage to the suit all over that hasn't actually gone all the way through and wounded the operator. So it would be useful if they can essentially ask the suit where the armour breaches are and which ones have gone all the way through the armour right to the operator. That way, for example, if there is surface damage on the thigh, but the suit's report is there's no internal damage to the thigh, but yet the chest plate has been damaged all the way through, then the field medic can know it needs to lift just the chest plate up to tend the wound, or because there could be clothing underneath and padding, that could be helping to apply pressure to the wound. The medic can then decide whether to lift the chest plate up or leave it down for now and should be able to do that quite quickly and efficiently. And just to add to that, I do think with a suit like this in the future, possibly just the next prototype as well, I think there is potential to have a layer of pockets, particularly on the chest plate, that could be full of the wound powder that I've seen used in some field dressing videos. I don't really know what you call that stuff, I'm sure someone out there watching this could put it in the comments below. 
but yeah you could have something like that in pockets so if the armor does get penetrated and you have some light shrapnel wounds a powder pocket could essentially burst and then fill the surface of the wounds to help reduce the bleeding and then to control and monitor all of the electronics on the suit whether that be the damage monitoring system the power levels of the suit in general the actuators what i intend on putting in is a voice activation system so there'll be a microphone mounted to the top of the chest plate and on this version a little speaker at the back of the neck in future variants i'm sure they will be integrated into the helmet but for the next prototype it will just be easier to have it built onto the torso section itself i did think about having some form of touch screen onto the forearm itself quite a typical thing you see in sci-fi where it could be mounted on the inside of the wrist but frankly it'll just get broken immediately and then you're absolutely screwed on controlling any aspects of the suit and that's if the touch screen doesn't end up changing modes or causing problems on the suit in general so even while a voice activation suit might sound potentially problematic it's less problematic than having basically a small ipad to break on the inside of your forearm i'm fairly confident for each individual suit there'll be a code word applied to the suit so the operator or field medic would have to say that code word to activate the voice activation system on the suit which could just be a name for your suit as an operator they of course could be a universal code word for the field medics who are then wanting to tend to said operator in my case i've named this project obsidian so my code word to activate this in a similar manner to how you say hey siri my code would be obsidian which would then allow you to for example change the parameters of the motors so i can have different motor modes so there could be a full power mode there could be an endurance mode there could be a low power to the arms or low power to the legs there could potentially be a last stand mode that basically turns all limitations all temperature limitations everything off on all of the motors and just lets it go and do as much as possible other things to of course be monitored is the battery power levels themselves which could either be read, read out or asked for the damage monitoring system again would report the damage immediately and you could also ask for a report of the damage at any point i'm sure this could be used to integrate further information as we are in the information age particularly on the battlefield with different aircraft drones etc i'm sure this system could help integrate information to the user in the future as well and of course another mode that would be included as it's a voice activation system and would be audible is a quiet mode or a silent mode just to make sure the suit doesn't start audibly reporting something when you want it to be silent these things all to me at least used to sound very sci-fi like it was a very difficult thing to do uh, all those things are pretty easy to do really i mean as long as you have some base code to work off of none of this is particularly difficult anymore uh, it's far more difficult to actually make the armor plate and get it to size and get it to fit properly pretty much everything i've just mentioned can be just done off c plus plus using something like arduino very easily and very cost effectively these systems could actually be the quickest thing to integrate into one of these suits at all i imagine building again the armor and the skeleton will always take way longer than fitting any of those systems into the suit itself and now it's time for a bit of break of me talking and we'll move on to the everyday workplace mobility it's not meant to be any serious testing just something that would be a bit intriguing to watch seeing someone in a prototype superpower armor do regular work things that hopefully you'll find fairly entertaining oh and just a point of note i haven't had time to do anything with the groin pad yet or the pauldrons and i'm currently trying to make another helmet so that's why they're missing on this part of the video and for any lumber guys out there, this axe hasn't been in a good shape for a long time, so I assure you, ground strikes aren't making any worse.
I wasn't going to get the chainsaw out, hence why I didn't have anything big to cope. However, then I realised I could pose with a chainsaw in a prototype suit of power armour. So, yeah. I did want to see if I could get on the fork truck and drive it. The seat wouldn't go back, so I did have to take the backpack off to get on. Unfortunately, there just wasn't quite the amount of space that I needed to actually press the pedals properly. And on to, I guess, a point of contention, which is the power supply for this whole thing. I've looked at a few different options. Of course, your typical aircraft drone battery. Being a typical lithium polymer cell. However, anybody who's had particularly radio controlled aircraft know that these aren't exactly robust. If you crash a radio control plane with one of these, it's basically scrap because you don't know if it's going to set on fire next time. So I don't think these are the best ideas to put into the backpack, into the suit. Which brings me on to 18650s, or I believe it's Bigger Brother, which I think is a 21700. These are the things that are typically in power tool batteries like these. They're very reliable, not badly priced, decent energy density, but crucially, they can be easily made into individual packs, allowing a power pack to be made up for this suit that suits its individual needs and charging capabilities. As you can imagine, if I stacked these individual 18650s, or again it's Bigger Brother, into the power pack, you could fit a hell of a lot of 18650s if you rammed that entirely full of batteries, giving the potential for a very large power supply. With all that being said, what I will be doing on this suit is I think I will be using your typical power tool batteries like these, just for testing. They're pretty reliable, easy to wire up, plenty of aftermarket terminals and clips that can easily be stacked into this backpack. Like so, I think I could fit about 16 batteries in here if I want. That will allow me to carry out some kind of real world testing to really know how many battery cells actually need to be put into this backpack. And now I did just want to touch on the design philosophy of this suit. That being that it is designed to be a heavyweight suit that offers a lot of protection and of course will require its own at least modified military doctrine to be used and worked correctly. I've not designed it to be integrated completely into normal infantry units just like any other soldier. It's more of being designed to have its own military doctrine, similar to how the tank's got its own military doctrine, or even perhaps the machine gun team had or has its own military doctrine. And of course, will require its own at least modified logistical train to go along with it. Perhaps in the future, on later variants, that logistical train can be reduced, perhaps it can be lighter variants, perhaps it can be more easily integrated into infantry units. But at least for these earlier variants, it's designed in mind that it will essentially be its own specialised unit and not folded into just completely regular units themselves. And one of the reasons for this is I believe we are at the point with technology where a suit like this is now possible, but only really in a Goldilocks zone of particular power supply. And that's it, I don't think a suit is feasible if it's gonna give you super strength. The power supply needed to give super strength will be too much. I also think if you wanted to make a super lightweight suit of armour, exoskeleton, that if anything increases speed of the operator as well as endurance, I don't think that's currently possible. I don't think the lithium cells or any battery cell is currently light enough with a high enough power density to achieve that. But what I'm confident in is that we are in the point of battery technology and actual technology where if you have a suit like this that is heavily armoured and the actuators are only there to assist the operator with the weight of the armour and basically make the weight of the armour weightless on said operator. I do think that technology is there right now, especially it being heavily armoured. If this backpack ends up being com basically completely full of 18650s, with the fact that this already weighs, sorry, currently weighs in around 55 kilos, I imagine with said battery pack and everything else, I'll be looking at about 70 helos for the entire suit. 
with the suit weighing that, if that battery pack has to be an extra five kilos heavier, it doesn't really make a difference. It's designed to hold the weight, it's part of the backpack, it's not going to affect the limbs and the rest of the movement. Again, it's not meant to be an ultra fast suit, so those extra batteries aren't really going to slow it down, they're not going to make much of a difference. And that brings us about to the end of this video. In the next video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, although it is to work alongside this suit. That is the start of a new series of me trying to build my own prosthetic cybernetic tech eye. One of my many injuries is that I only have one eye, my left one being a prosthetic. And I've seen some people on Instagram in particular with tech eyes, with some form of at least basic electronics built into a prosthetic eye lens. So I'm going to be starting my own path of making my own. This will be a custom moulded tech eye with electronics built into it. So the first step of that will be the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video and if this type of thing interests you or even just little things like a tech prosthetic eye, please follow along. Like and subscribe, but just you watching this video will help me massively. I have just been able to get monetized, which if I can make some money from AdSense will only speed this project up as well as anything else I end up doing along the way. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.